welcome you to the uh, county administration building. Uh, my name is Andy Wallace. I know mostly everybody in the room, uh, chief of staff. In, on November 9th of uh, 2017, county commissioners received a letter from Mayor Courtright expressing his concerns on reassessment and hoping that we could sit down and meet and discuss. I spoke to the mayor's office in November and again in December. We were all in the middle of our budget cycles at the time and we all agreed that we would do this in the first quarter of the year. I communicated with Kay in your office to set it up and I, I told her to reserve the right to bring anybody in the council, administration, the commissioners would be here, our solicitors, we would sit down and discuss it. Uh, it became a major news story because it was on the Scranton Times website yesterday. It certainly is a, a public meeting and we have no objections whatsoever to the public being in here. At this time, we're gonna go around the table Everybody's going to introduce themselves, and then we're basically going to open it up for discussion. The only other thing I would say, because of the nature of the meeting, I I'd like to introduce Ted Wample, who's the business administrator for the city of Wilkes-Barre. And the reason we asked Ted to come is because the city of Wilkes-Barre is a critical city in Luzerne County, like Scranton is in Lackawanna County. Luzerne County did a reassessment in uh, approximately three years ago for the entire county. The city of Wilkesburg did not adopt the reassessment from Luzerne County. He's going to tell you why. He's going to explain it to you, tell you the way they operate, because we think it's important that the city of Scranton understand this. Now, when you said we invited him, who invited him specifically? I, am, I, I specifically invited okay. Ted. Okay. I, had, been, I, request. I had met Ted last year okay. during the course of the reassessment when okay. I was I'm going just curious. around I, I, meeting I, with I was the unaware counties. of that. I met, I told you this morning because I was uncertain whether Ted was going to be able to come <coughs> or, whether, or whether he would want it come or give the information out. I met I met Ted through Dave Petrie and some of our attorneys. I met Ted met with, in my office last year. I went and I met with him again yesterday to get this information because I think it's important information that the city of Scranton have that you can view what they had and what the action they're taking and why. So okay. Ted is the only person in the room that uh, nobody really knows so I want to kind of point him out. So we're going to start by going around the table with Commissioner O'Malley who's going to officially welcome us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to our commissioner's conference room. I'm Commissioner Patrick O'Malley. Ted, go ahead. I'm Ted Wampel. I'm the city administrator for the city of Wilkesburg. I'm Commissioner Larry Cummings. I'm Jerry Naturiani. Evan Weiss, consultant to the city. Mayor Courtright, city of Scranton. Jessica Ascro, city solicitor. Uh, Pat Rogan, president of city council. Wayne Evans, Grand city council. Fran Pantuso, commissioner's office. John Brazil, county solicitor. John Sierra, city solicitor. Don Fredrickson, general counsel. ready to start. Mayor, do you want yeah, to? Yeah, sure. We've, I, I, we've set the meeting up at your request. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank you for, for allowing us to come here. I, it was my hope that we could sit down and, and try to work this out and see what's best for, for the city of Scranton and all of Lackawanna County. Um, we feel, and I know council strongly feels, that reassessment is the way to go, and, and, and I, I would agree with them. Uh, I, I would ask if you will allow Evan to maybe uh, state for you, because he's been with us from the beginning, and it was a thing that when we Obviously, when we took over the city of Scranton over four years ago, we had some serious financial problems. Um, and fortunately, now we're in better shape. We still have a long way to go, but we're, we're, we're in better shape. And it was because of some of the help that HGA Strategies and Evan had given to us that we find ourselves in a better position than we did several years ago. Uh, and this is one of the things that we had discussed from the very beginning. So if, if, if you would allow Evan to just state some of the reasons why we think that we, we would need a reassessment, I'd, I'd appreciate it if we can do it that way. Thank you, Mayor. And so we primarily came on right when Mayor Court wrote it <coughs> and primarily focused on budget matters, um, whether it's the pension, debt, uh, and some of the revenue matters as well. But an undercurrent to all of this is that the basic toolkit we found was limited uh, because of the underlying kind of government structure and economics of the area, and specifically how the real property tax system worked, where there was such a skewing of values uh, that we're not used to seeing that it created some, you know, just some sectors of the population that bore a higher burden, some a lower burden. And we always felt that, you know, the year we came in, I believe there's a 56% property tax increase. Um, that was the last budget under Mayor Doherty. That's such a high percentage because it needed to be to generate the revenue given how disparate the revenue base was because of what we needed with the millage. So while we focused on 
again, basic budget issues, whenever myself or Henry would talk, and particularly to the chamber which funded our work, we would always, they would always ask, like, what is the major economic development thing that we should focus on? Is it trying to go after a Chris, uh, Lurda, something to that effect? And we would always return to the idea of the most important thing that can probably be done is some kind of fix for the real property tax base here. And that's an issue that, you know, rests with the county. So we believe it's incredibly important. We also understand how <coughs> difficult it is. Um, myself and my firm have been through several of these uh, in New Jersey. We've watched closely here uh, some of the other counties that are going through it right now, you know, Delaware County notably, uh, working with the city of Chester. Um, so I think today I th we want to underscore that we do believe it's very important. I'm very happy that the uh, business administrator from Wilkes-Barre is here, uh, given that in looking at that, I'd like to hear more about the mechanics of having kind of two sets of books and particularly raising your municipal levy versus the county levy and the school levy to a portion of equalized levies versus your own. So that'd be very interesting to hear more about. But I think today is a session just to try to hear more about what your approach has been so far. And again, for us, so I know the council feels very similarly, this is just such a uh, difficulty for new business to come in, new homes, even existing homes and businesses to make improvements that might trigger a reassessment that would then lift them up to a value that's much different than what they were, um, you know, or had been for 40 years potentially. So that's why we're here, and I think it's to try to learn a little bit more about the process thus far, and again, just to keep saying why we feel this is so important. Does council want to add anything? Because I mean, council had a strong voice in this. Just uh, briefly, I'm not repeating anything you already know. Um, council did take a vote last year, and overwhelmingly, council you know supports the reassessment. And um, by getting it done by any means necessary. Now, the biggest, one of the biggest problems we have in the city is there's no new construction. Um, we've tried other tools to incentivize new construction in the city, but as you all know, if you build a new house, you're taxed at a 2018 assessment. Everyone else <coughs> is taxed at an assessment 50 years ago. So there's no incentive to build new. Um, we hear that from the business community, especially. Um, that it's hurting them as well and, and deterring businesses from coming in the city. But for me, ultimately, it's an issue of fairness. Um, as a real estate agent, I'll take people through the city and, um, you know, they'll look at the tax bills. It's the first thing they look at. There's homes that are paying less than $1,000 in taxes in the city for a small home. Similar home a block away is paying two and a half times that. It's, it's just not a fair, <clears throat> just not a fair system. Um, one of the things that uh, has come up <coughs> over the last couple of years is Grand has a two-tier tax rate. We have a tax on land and we have a tax on improvements. The rest of the county does not. So that's that's sort of a self-inflicted wound because we did it to ourselves back in the 80s. Uh, but it doesn't work anymore. What it does is disincentivize growth and opportunity. And we have uh, tax bills that are on land, and it's a higher millage rate, by the way. Uh, we have a house here and a house across the street that have two different uh, assessments for the land. Uh, it's ludicrous. So we tried to look at that. We talked to PEL to see if they can change that. They did a study, and it's virtually impossible to change the two-tier tax to a single tax entity or scenario without a reassessment. So that's another thing that's driving uh, what we need to do and, and get to a reassessment. Uh, if I may, I'd like to talk to Ted a little bit about Wilkes-Barre because uh, is it now? Did Wilkes-Barre always have their own assessment office prior to? So that's a little different. And, you know, Scranton obviously never did, but my understanding is Wilkes-Barre always did their own assessment. So right. when the reassessment was done back in 2009, yeah, smart, yeah, um, it was already in place. Correct. So Wilkes-Barre decided just to continue down that path. Correct. They had their staff in place. They had everything in place, so they just maintained that. Correct. Okay. Uh, that's that's the point I want to make. It wasn't something that you decided in 2009 when the reassessment was being done. Like we're going to opt out of this. It, basically, you're already going down that route. Right. Well, the, the city opted out. I'm sorry. It's okay. uh, so the city opted out. I don't want to speak for the prior administration uh, and, and the reason behind it, but I know one of the things that they didn't want to do was lose control. Right. Uh, since we had the assessment office already in place, we had all the mechanics in there. We wanted to be able to control the assessment of the properties. The, we wanted to control the assessment fields. You know, we wanted to keep our hand in everything since that time. Um, 
the, we've, we've actually downsized the assessor's office. It now is a, uh, an assessor that we, we basically use as a consultant. We pay him a monthly fee. He's part-time. And uh, we don't do a whole lot of assessments anymore. I'm sorry, assessment appeals. Um, so the assessment, the assessor's office for all practical purposes is almost non-existent. Did, now when the assessment, reassessment was done, did Wilkesbury do their own reassessment at that time? Or no, they we didn't. And that was part of the issue. When, when Mayor George came in, uh, we started a conversation with, and I've only been there since, yeah. since Mayor George came in. So we started a conversation with the county. Mm -hmm. uh, realizing that if we're going to downsize and eventually you know, maybe don't no longer need that assessor's office we need to look at finally getting on board with the county numbers okay. so we started a conversation uh, county manager Dave Pedro thought it was a great idea and we started looking at uh, we, we met we met with Tony Alu who was the, the uh, county assessor and we said okay let's start this process and see what it looks like and we heard all the arguments for it and against it. You know, the, we know it was going to be a revenue neutral. Uh, you couldn't raise taxes for a period of time. Um, we heard that, you know, a third goes down, a third goes up, a third stays the same. We heard all of that. We heard, heard a lot of good reasons for it. We heard some reasons that we might not want to consider doing it. So we looked at it. And we got, we got really deep into the weeds with it. We got as far as, you know, the county did all the configuration on what our assessed book is, which is, uh, and I don't have my glasses on me, but it, it, it's substantial. We did it by ward, and then we configured what the tax revenue was and came up with the new millage based upon what the county figures were. Because keep in mind, one of the reasons we wanted to do it is Luzerne County's numbers are probably the top in the state. Mm -hmm. And so we figured this is a great time to do it if we're gonna do it. We wouldn't have to go through a substantial cost to do it, we would just adopt their numbers. There, there'd be no reason for us to do a reason. They're at 100% ratio. Right. You wanted to point that they're out. They're probably above 100%, aren't they? No, they're at 100%. Right you, they're right want right okay. you want to be at 100%. Well, you want to be at 100%, but right. I know it's for a while when the market was strong, they were actually above 100%. Yeah, they're, I mean, it, yeah. it's a, it's probably a point or two yeah. on either side, but they're, yeah. they're rated as one of the best right. in the state. So we went through that, and then we came up with a new assessment figure. And then what we, uh, with a new uh, uh, millage. So then we, we, we applied. The, the county assessment figures on the properties against what some of the city assessments were and expected to see this disparity in numbers. We pulled old properties, new properties, different areas of the city, properties that uh, hadn't changed hands in you know 50 years, properties that were recently sold within the last couple of years. And the startling revelation there was Every single property, and I have you know, a listing for you, um, saw a tax increase. And it was substantial. And the average increase on those 10 properties was about 46%. And it wasn't just, we get it, you know, the property that hadn't been assessed in 50 years, we expected because they, they were on the lower level. We, you know, for example, the one property uh, was at, at $223, but, and that was an older property, it came up to $406, we expected that. But we expected to see the reduction somewhere along the lines. There was a property that was uh, about four or five years old that had a $2,100 uh, uh, tax amount for 2017. We thought that's where we would see the reduction. It was 2633 under the new numbers. So when we went through that entire list, the How did you pick these numbers again, Ted? How did you pick these properties? We picked them at random. Thank you. But we did them based upon age, because we don't want to grab them all from one part of the city, because you, you know, Wilkes-Barre is not a whole lot different from Scranton Mirror with the demographics. And the way it said, you've got some older sections of the city, we have some where there were some new developments, but we picked them all over, and just at random. And we looked at them, and the unfortunate thing is it came in with every single property increase. And at that point, we put the brakes on, because while Scranton's been through it and, and is recovering, we're still fighting that. And we just couldn't see ourselves clear to, you know, when we're in this tight position, especially with the property owners, to now get some of these people, and that's probably a, a you know, senior citizen with a property that hadn't changed hands in 50 years, and we're gonna increase their property tax by about 60%. Ted, would you have any objections to sharing that with everybody here? I don't, and what I'm gonna give you is, um, we have the chart, uh, the summary chart on the front <coughs> page, and then th this is all public record. So we have, we pulled all the tax pages for these 10 properties. 
um, and, and you'll see some of the, the manual computations down below, and I, I think I will have enough for everybody. Ted, was there any instance at all where any residential property owner in the city of Wolfsburg would have had a decrease in their taxes? Not on these properties. And, and so the reason we put the skids after pulling these 10 We could share it on this end. I'm yeah. good. We're fine. I'm good. I'm fine. John and I and Pat can share. We're yeah. fine. Yeah. We're fine. I went done. with you. But it wasn't, there wasn't a reassessment done. You basically just took the numbers from the, the county. Right. We weren't going to do that. So Century, Century 21, 100% uh, accuracy. But Century 21 did not do a reassessment and evaluation of Wilkesbury City. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They did? Yes, yeah, they did. And that's where the county, that, they did that for the county. Okay. And so if you live in the city, oh, they did it with, they your did, county they did taxes are while you were doing the county? Correct. Okay. But the city opted not to accept the figures in our in our computations, our assessment. So because it would have raised the taxes on all the residential properties in the city of Wilkesbury. Right. How many line items do you have in Wilkesbury? How many lines in the tax rolls? How many properties? Uh, fourteen thousand. So you have fourteen thousand. It's almost it's about fifteen thousand, correct? Fifteen thousand. And so you pick ten properties out of the fifteen thousand, and just random sample, but based on age. Uh, well, correct. Based upon the yeah. parameters that I had laid out, we, we picked homes that had changed hands recently. Put brand homes new houses, brand new correct. homes. We we did it, we, and we did it in all different sections of the city. Because we look at it, there's five different board uh, council boards, right? There. Now, can I ask you just to give give us a little bit more detail on the methodology you used in um, coming up with this reassessed figure? What can you give me some more detail on that? So the reassessed figure that we use to compute what the new tax would be is the county number. Okay. And so when you raise, you raise your city taxes based off your numbers, right? But then how do you apportion it for the county taxes, Luzerne County taxes or your school district? How does that work? Do you need to use the county assessment for that? Correct. Okay. So, so the, the county tax might, for example, I'm, and I'm a, I live in South Wilkesbury, so I, play, I pay uh, county taxes based upon the assessment. The county, the county assessment? assessment? Sure. Okay. I pay school taxes based upon the county assessment because the school district right. uses the county because assessment. Because of equalization. But I pay city taxes based upon the city's assessment. So then there are two sets of books, it sounds like, depending on... Correct. Okay. Yeah, the city has their own their own set. We do our own. We, we send our own tax bills out. We just recently sent them out a couple weeks ago. Um, I believe the county sent theirs out right around the same time, and then the school district will go out <coughs> when their fiscal year that starts in uh, July, August. Well, the problem is, though, this is not going to be revenue neutral. So don't you have to adjust your millage rate to compensate for that? No, it is revenue neutral. If everybody's getting a tax increase, how is it revenue neutral? But okay. it's, that's the sample size question, yeah. right? They've picked 10 right. out of right. 15,000. Right. Yeah. So it will have to be revenue neutral. It will balance itself out. Yeah. So our... our so there'll be, for every, I mean, we did I not guess there's 10 others that went down. We did not pull commercial properties. And when we pulled these 10 and realized that there was an increase coming on the personal that it, again because it's revenue neutral you would expect to see commercial properties drop so we didn't pull it and at that point we basically ended our own study and the county agreed we all agreed that this is just not the right time for this uh, it, it's been a long time I you, mean, it, you it, based your decision off 10 properties yes okay. now so it let didn't me, include any commercial properties. it did not so let me fast forward that uh, so this was done last summer a couple of months ago it came up uh, during a council public meeting where they started asking about the county council or the no, city council no, city council okay. so we had we resurrected the conversation again and let them know that we have already done some background work and we got deep into the weeds with this stuff and we looked at these properties we told council you know that we had pulled 10 you know, council went back and forth, uh, said maybe 10 is not enough and we perhaps need to pull more, which we agreed that we do. So it's an ongoing study with the city. Um, we agreed that we would pull more properties, so we would pull commercial properties and look at them, and we will we will do that. Um, so it's it, you know it's 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 not an active conversation, but it's not a dead conversation at this point. Um, we will pull those numbers. We will pull additional numbers. We don't expect on the on the uh, on the uh, personal property uh, to see uh, 
any big difference. So okay, I would be surprised. So you have, you, you have the county's assessment and then you do your own assessment, correct? Right. Okay, different than what we do. But how much was the cost to do the reassessment? Do you know? The county reassessment? Yeah. I, I don't. It's ongoing. No, no, he's asking. I think he's talking about your own. Well, both. Both. Yeah. Okay. County yeah. well, and yours. They re they re we've, done, we've done years ago. Well, yeah. 60 years okay. ago. Okay. So yeah. But you don't know what the county's cost was for the recent reason. I really don't. Okay. All right. No. Thank you. And so we use their numbers uh, because obviously they're, you can just go to the website. I mean, uh, one of the media has a, has a website oh. you can go on and pull the county reassessment numbers. Mayor, I'm pretty sure it was pretty beyond $15 million. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Including, including the appeals. Oh, and there's still a active appeals on the reassessment. Active appeals are ongoing. They still have some money in reserve to cover this. One of the other reasons that we paused on this how is... Did they, excuse me, how did they fund that? Through a bond issue. Actually. Bond issue. I met with the county administrator, Dave Petri. Initially, I went around and I spoke to different counties. And uh, Dave is the one that introduced me and told me about Ted and said I should also speak to him too. But I didn't want to interject this last year during our conversation because I didn't think it was fair to bring it out at that time because like, we were trying to be totally neutral in our entire approach, just put the issue out there for the assessment, we'll let the people decide. We did not interject any of this into it. Well, the court said it was not a neutral question. That was rejected. We contend that it was. Right, well, you contend that it was, and court said that okay. it Our, our, our was. question was drawn up by uh, a, a lawyer from Philadelphia that was recommended by the County Commissioners Association to meet the legal requirements of what had to be onto the ballot. And anybody who believes that the homestead was written better than what we wrote, it's, it's amazing. Actually, the numbers are, just blows my mind. The homestead went down, was, was 21,805 votes for the yes, 16,000 for the and again, no. And again, a valid question that was ruled illegal and void. Yeah, but no it's still proved that the people went out and voted, they Commissioner. They went out and voted for something they totally did not understand, and the right. courts ruled on that. Seems they, to me they understood did you, it. They did understood you read the form, Steph? How do you <laughs> try to understand that? The numbers show that they understood it. They no, don't want, they, no they gave the state permission we're to not go ahead. We're not, that's we're not why we're here today. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah, what I'm right, trying to explain is we did not We did not want to bring this out during the reassessment. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, real quick, real quick. Let's first move on to something positive. One second, Mayor. I just want this out there. First and foremost, this was as much in the middle of the road as this possibly could, the education we put out there. There was never a time when I gave my opinion, or Jerry and Christian Cummings had their opinion. We kept it out there as much as we possibly could. If you saw any of this, this was as neutral as it possibly could be. Yeah. We did not use any type of trick methods or bring someone in to try to waver anybody. I mean, this is a sister city of ours. You know what I mean? Conrad Bosley from the Realtors Association came and said it was one of the best neutral presentations he's ever seen in his entire life. It would give us nothing but plaudits for the presentation that we presented right. in six different locations. And I was at City Hall. I'll concur with that 100%. I agree that the presentation was absolutely neutral and well done. However, the question was basically asking people, please vote no to raise your taxes. You have to borrow money. Yeah, we'll have, have to Real, borrow just money. for one yeah, second. But Solicitor, do we have to put a number in with what the question would be? Yeah, the, the, the that's language what the for big the, debacle was. We couldn't just do it all day long. Okay. 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 We're not going to go back to that. Okay. Okay. That's, we're not going to settle that. Well, we, we didn't bring any of this. But I just, I just want the, the answer to be answered. The, the number has to be with the question, right? Yeah. We, okay. we, we took the question pretty much from the referendum uh, act itself. We just, you know, should we borrow X amount of dollars and scan the act itself? So politics aside, yeah, let's with on. regard right. to the question, right. since we have a representative from Wilkes-Barre here, I have a few additional questions. So we talked about the impact of reassessment, but I think there's one other aspect that we need to address that the city's concerned with, which is uniformity in taxation. Fairness. We want to make sure that taxes are fair for our constituents as well as countywide. So when you did, I, I see your sampling of 10 here with regard to impact, but did you do any assessments on uniformity? I know that the um, in an International Association of Assessors has certain benchmarks, certain you know standards that they can use statistically to determine the fairness of taxes. Did you guys talk about the coefficient of dispersion, any of those methodologies? And that's a constitutional issue. Correct. That yeah. that does you know obviously the Constitution of of our Commonwealth provides that taxation needs to be uniform and fair. Um, so I'm wondering if that was any part of your decision, if you studied that. If we didn't. Uh, 
again, what we did was you know, we, we had some preliminary conversations with the county. We realized it's something we really wanted to look into. Um, we do realize the uniformity issue. I mean, it's I, I'm born and raised in the city, so you know it's not I'm not uh, uh, ignorant of, of where we are with that. That there is some disparity there. The question uh, with, that we had, uh, and then we had this during the public meeting with council, was is this the time that we want to go into this and and looking at what some of these issues were going to be, knowing that we have a problem right now with property values. We just uh, came out of a roundtable discussion with Senator <coughs> Casey yesterday regarding uh, flood protection and what that's doing to the property values in the city. So we've got, uh, you know, I'll call it a perfect storm, and, and, and forgive the analogy because of it's related to the flood, but where we've got a lot of things that are suppressing pro property values and the fact that you can't sell your property for what you should we do something like this now, and it wasn't going to help. It was going to really hinder the process. So, I, yeah, there's a uniformity issue. There's absolutely no question. Our, our problem was, is this the time to do it? And with us, it's not. Like I said, we're in the process of continuing the conversation, and we are going to continue to look at properties. Uh, we're also looking at, you know, we're, we're exploring what else is out there besides just a straight property tax. We've had presentations come. We've got to figure out something. You know, there's a land use uh, tax, as you're, you're aware, that you can opt into uh, that is more in development of the product. So we're trying to look at all kinds of other things as well. This is obviously what's in place now. This is what's in front of us. And based upon the data that we came up with, it was for us. And again, we're not a whole lot different, Mayor, um, but we, we could not. And then there, believe me, there was no appetite on council to go forward with it either. We just agreed that we will continue to look at it and, and, and again we will ex we're going to expand the data and, and see if there's you know if we got lucky and pulled 10 properties that are you know an anomaly as opposed to being a, you know, a true sample, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket tomorrow because for us to be able to pull those 10 properties at random and find those kinds of results and they're not uh, you know, indicative of but what, they, but they all can't go up under some have to go down. Well, they, I mean, uh, and again, we didn't know th this is exactly, but we didn't pull properties that commercial all properties. My so guess is it's on the commercial and, and why, why commercial didn't you pull commercial properties? What was your reason for not knowing yeah. that? Our because our concern initially is what happens to our residents, okay? okay. And, and your, your property tax assessments are different than the, your counties, correct? Correct, okay. <laughs> and when was the last time the city? Reassessed. As we, I mentioned earlier, it's probably been probably 50, 60 years. 50, 60 years. Okay. You know how many municipalities? 50, 60 years. And it's non, and, and it currently it's still an ongoing conversation. 50, 60 years later, it's still an ongoing conversation. Yeah, I mean, listen, okay. you know, years ago, you know, should the city have opted in? And one of the reasons we looked at it, you know, should the city have opted into the county numbers back then? And, and you know, there are two valid arguments, one for and one against it. And, you know, if we had, they had opted in back then, a lot of this hurt and pain would have gone through back then. And you know, nine years later, we're not having this conversation. And I'm not sitting in front of you. Um, but I believe you know, the, one of the reasons that they didn't do it back then was, you know, in, in addition to the control, was like there's going to be an impact here on residents. Now, listen, and I, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, argue for businesses or, or against businesses. But you know, when we look at it and you know, we've got a responsibility to residents, as you all do. We have responsibility to the businesses that do, uh, you know, business in, in, in our city. I, I'm born a raiser. I, I, I can't see, you know, my argument wouldn't be, I can't do that to that property owner on Chapel Street. Not right now. And, and again, there, there's, you could talk about the uniformity. You know, we'll see where it, where it ends up going if somebody wants to challenge us. But, at this point, our decision, and then there was no appetite on council at that point to, to continue that conversation. We just okay. couldn't well, do that you, now. Okay. Since you did not do your reassessment, you opted out. Is the city allowed to do its own reassessment? We could, but we would we wouldn't take it on our own because the county numbers are it, it's it's at one hundred percent. Right. Yeah, so we would we would say if, if, if we were gonna if we were gonna do anything about assessed value, we would adopt the county because they're at 100 percent if the county numbers were off you know if they were at you know 90 or 110 or whatever there it, it's one of the top no 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 offense like county it's one of the top uh in, in the state so if we were going to 
adopt figures, we would just adopt the county. There's only three, three firms in the Commonwealth that can even do a reassessment. Right. What I'm asking is, if, if, you, if the county did not do a reassessment, could, do it, could does the city, city go out yes, can the city go out we, and do its own reassessment on its own city? Sure. So can the city of Scranton do its own reassessment on its own residents? We do get our county? figures from the county. Well, there's also a limit the, most the, areas the of law of the common class three city. city. Right. right. So right. yeah, right. So there, there's a difference. Right. When I was in, when I was in the tax city. office, the county would send me a disc every year and say, here, here's here's the reason. Well, I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. We're third class so, home rules. So yeah. Here's a situation that mandate that was with the county, not the city. Maybe well, well, there there is a mandate with the boroughs and the cities, and that's when I was going around doing the presentation that I did. Um, the cities, boroughs, townships weren't aware of the fact that they can actually challenge the uh, appeals process and nobody was doing that now the city of scranton does send their solicitor to our office from what i understand correct john mr foley yes. um but you the, the there's a there's a protection for the city the township and the boroughs so that they can go in and actually fight these appeals that hasn't been being done throughout the boroughs and the townships because they didn't even know that they could do that that was one of the problems I found, and, and that's what I talked to you guys about at your Scranton City Council meeting, was that, you know, you do have the ability to fight those appeals and the appeals process. The school district also can, can do that as well. And the school districts, from what I understand, are not. So, so when the appeals process occurs, that was one of the, the complaints I had received. So what, what I had asked the commissioners to do when they agreed was to put the appeals hearings on our website so that people were now on public record as and their appeals and the results are on our website now so is that that's true, something Mr. yes it is true i i had every two weeks they they have uh, it up on our website no, no. john would you well, confirm that's that not, that's not actually do what yeah, i'm saying the is appeal that hearings when they're uh, when we set up the appeal hearings the people that are to appear that are appearing they go on the website and then after the hearings are done the final tally is put on the website yes. so you have a before you have a, a current assessment and then you have an after I, i'm trying to work with for the city record council for those you may not know so that we can try and make a difference these are some of the things that we've been working on here at the county to try and help in in, in the complaints that you are, are legitimate complaints i understand your legitimate complaints that doesn't help with the fairness issue because the vast majority of people don't even know how to appeal their taxes but what it did was it, it alerted the boroughs to the fact that they can actually come in and appeal they have that ability you do there is a, a, a safety net for the cities and the townships and the boroughs so that they don't get this disparity that you're referring to but nobody has been doing that so that's why you come up with these issues of fairness and the inequality where the taxes are out of sync because nobody is doing their part of it and following through so there is another area you can it doesn't always have to be about spending millions of dollars um, you can come into the county and, and fight those appeals. So that was the one thing that I had talked to, to you at your meeting about. And I also had asked if you would, and, and you're for House Bill 76, um, I think that as a, a whole, the municipalities can work together. And I'd much rather see a positive outcome from our meetings rather than fighting each other in regards to a reassessment um, and creating havoc throughout, throughout the county. Um, it looks like we're going to get some type of property relief tax bill out of this legislature. Now, whether the governor signs it or not, we don't know. But I think with that happening, that we should not be talking about lawsuits until we actually know the outcome of what's going to happen at, at the State House, which looks like it's happening quickly. It already came out of the House. It looks like it's going to come out of the Senate, and we'll see where the governor's going. Uh, oh, we're not yes, asking for a Everyone's lot of time. for, well, not everyone. The majority of city council is for Senate Bill 76. We sent letters in support of it, so there's no disagreement there. That only affects school property. I understand taxes. that. that now, but you're not letting. Me, but you didn't let me finish. So then, the remainder of, of the problem that I foresee is the actual tax law, property tax law, is a flawed law. Can we all agree to that? That it's a flawed law the way it's set up. But that's I mean, the law that we have to. Deal I understand with at this that, but if, if if we as as uh, leaders in our community. Uh, look to the state legislature to change that. Why is it that we can't get that law changed to include uh, reassessment at sale or transfer? I mean, that makes sense. I mean, then we wouldn't have to spend millions of dollars. I understand they call it spot assessment, but it is a flawed law, and look at what it's causing. 
we are all sitting around this table. We're trying to work this out um, reasonably. And that's where I would hope that we can go in this discussion and not have um, arguments or, or any, any kind of um, you know nastiness going on. One thing that would be great to go beyond that. is just some more data to try to do something similar to this that Wilkes-Barre did. So we just worked on a process for 27,000 properties, did a statistical analysis to see what the effects of a reassessment would be. Okay. So to be able to work with some of the county's assessment data to try to run the numbers would be very helpful to try to make it a, put more daylight on this so we have a better idea of how it might really affect different classes of property owners, commercial, residential, senior citizens, and so forth. Um, I, I understand you, you have this one-third thinking. No, I'm saying we I can find out. He's just asking if we could, <laughs> no, we could know, work with you to get the data. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't see why. Yeah. I mean, we I share, well, we we shared are. all the data with the city yeah. that we had in our old records. Anytime they've asked us for anything, we have 100% yeah. cooperation. That would just be a good place to start. Yeah, we, excuse, let me just, I just want to put two scenarios before you that happens to me on, on a regular basis. We have a, a development in, in West Granton where um, all new houses, all right? The gentleman came to me the other day. He has 20 lots that he cannot sell, all right, in a new development in West Granton. Because of the fact that when people are building a house over there, their taxes are $7,000 a year if they put a house up there, all right? Where just a few blocks down the road, it's $1,500 for the house that existed. So he can't sell these lots. He's coming to me, he's got with a hardship case. He was looking for me to help him out somehow. Uh, then I had another individual that was gonna buy a property in our downtown and he wanted to tear it down and put up, put up a hotel, a, a, a well-named, uh, you know, famous name hotel. He couldn't do it because once he tears it down and builds that up, he's going to get reassessed at, at this value now. And, and so that, that, that's, what's, that's, that's my dilemma when I have people come to me wanting to come to the city of Scranton, want to live in the city of Scranton, or want to put a business in the city of Scranton. They're, they're, you know, I'm just looking for the taxes to be fair and equitable for everybody. And so as you just said, you really ha haven't looked at it being fair and equitable for every, everybody, right? Because you did, not, you did not put in commercial, correct? All right. We didn't pull and, commercial and, you know, property. So, and, and I don't think any of us here are here to fight. We're here to get a solution. You know, so as, as Evan said, if we can get some data and we can, and we can take a look at it, maybe, maybe we can come up with an it's answer. A, it's all public Mayor, record, Mayor. Mayor. It's all on Mayor. the internet. Mayor, the second, this is the second time the city has said this. And with all due respect to the city, uh, you know, you're saying that because we haven't reassessed the county, your tax rates are higher in Scranton. Even if we do a countywide reassessment, exactly. the tax rates are going to be higher in the city of Scranton. I live in Moosic. I pay a third of what your residents pay in Scranton because it's not the assessment rate, it's your tax rates. Exactly. Between the school district and the, the city, right. you're so higher than everybody else. But it's the equity. And it's going to be higher. Rate. Even if we do a reassessment, your taxes will still be higher. Nobody wants to come to the city because your taxes are so high. But the effective the rate. tax rate on others right. is so much higher that, yes, Point taken. It's the right. income tax, the it's real the property tax. I'm going to buy a property in Music, or am I going to buy a property in Scranton? But people want to buy property. Come to Scranton. <laughs> um, well, people want to come to Scranton to buy property. Right. There, there's little new construction in the whole county, though. It's not just the Scranton issue because no, of, no, no. and you see the new property tax. Every new property that's built, what's the rational appeals thing to do? and and they get their tax knocked down significantly because the system is just so out of whack. But can I touch on, ladies and gentlemen? Let me just say, you know. If there's anybody that's a big investor in the city of Scranton, it's the Board of Commissioners here. We're investing $18 million, $18 million on a street that's for sale, for rent, for lease. You know what I mean? We didn't just come up with that. I mean, this building that we're currently sitting in, I mean, we could probably sell this to the university like that. But you know what? We're going to make sure it goes back on the tax roll because we understand it affects the city of Scranton. I also live in the city of Scranton. Like I said, that Globe store is one of the biggest investments we have in downtown Scranton. You don't think that that's going to help keeping the mall alive? What would happen if the mall just went down? We're going to inject 700 and some employees every single day. Not to count the amount of people that are going to do business with Lackawanna <coughs> County. We're bringing voter registration for Stafford Avenue. We're bringing domestic relations from Mayfield to downtown Scranton and every other business we have, including this building, it's that building. This building is going to have approximately 50 loft apartments in it with retail downstairs. Not to, not to say beyond the fact that, that we actually, we work with the city every single day. The land bank, my God, we probably provide over $100,000 per year and employ, and to employees to be able to do the land bank work. I mean, the land bank with all the 40 municipalities, the biggest municipalities, the city of Scranton, we're coming up at number 50. 
We've been selling properties since June. We're doing real well. But, I mean, we try to work with the city every day. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're pretty big investors here. We could have easily have taken our downtown administration building and stuck it up on Montage Mountain because we have property up there. We didn't. We invested with you guys. That's why we're here. Can I go back to what Commissioner Cummings said a little bit? Um, the man that I, mandate I was talking about was the mandate that the county has to have tax equity for all property owners. Uh, and what you were talking about is true. You know, we can go into any appeal, and we can sit there and we could fight that appeal. And everybody knows that. I think every city solicitor knows that every school. They don't. They, they well, found out when I they did, did when John I was Saris is my office. office. here to attest to that. Well, they, they then, sh then shame on them because they should know it because that's that's embarrassing that they don't. Uh, on SB 76, I was an early adopter. I was a supporter when it first came out of the scene, and we're still waiting for it. I know you're encouraged by what's happening now. I'm not. We've seen this drill before. So we've waited almost 50 years for a reassessment. <clears throat> we've waited decades for property tax reform. Actually. So if we're going to wait for a statewide solution, then we'll be sitting here decades from now having the same conversation. Okay. Well, and unfortunately, I think just to add to the point about the assessment appeals, I think it's great that you took the initiative to get word out there that more people know about the process. But I think when you have per pervasive inequities throughout the system, putting that burden on the taxpayer to ensure that their taxes are fair is really shifting your burden to them in a sense. Can you think. do me a favor and define what you're talking about in regards to fairness? What is uh, the fairness issue? In, the uniformity clause about? of the Pennsylvania Constitution in a nutshell basically says that you should be paying your fair share no more and no less. So what do you consider, that's what I'm asking, what does the city consider is the fair fairness and equity? What are you referring to when you refer to that? Well, I mean, well, you, you touch the dispersion yeah, of values. I would ask the city council because they talk about the fairness. So. You could you could pick any street in the city, and I encourage everyone to do this on their own block and look at what you're paying and look at what your neighbors are paying. And there's similar homes that their taxes are not even close. As I mentioned, there's 1,200 square foot homes in West Side that are paying less than a thousand dollars total tax. Is and that because of the appeals process, or is that because that's what they bought it at? It, the purchase right. price has the purchase price has nothing to do with the assessment. That's that's, that's absolutely what I'm saying, not though, true. Mr. Rogan, is that it could have gone through an appeals process? I looked up a lot of these homes, and it could have gone through the appeals process every year. There's there's some attorneys that are utilizing this appeals process every year and getting whole neighborhoods to go into the, to the county, and nobody's doing anything about it. That's Just why I, I put those appeals up on on our. I had our our commissioners do that. I mean, they people can now see what's actually <coughs> happening and who's doing it. And these boroughs and, and cities should be looking at those lists every every time they're up there to well, see who's actually doing this. So the some of the thing, people are going for appeals because of the inequities that are built into their neighborhood. But they're comparing it to older properties. Not always. Like we had a, a lady come into our office. Let me give you an example. She, she just built a brand new home in Scranton. And she was complaining because her multi-million dollar home was being assessed at a higher rate than the 30-year-old multi-million dollar home down the street, which I looked to our assessor's office and said, well, why would she be allowed to? It's a brand new home. There's completely different scenarios. You're in, you're in real estate. Yeah. Shouldn't they be assessed completely different anyway? Market rate is market rate. Right, and so that's what they're assessed at, but then they're being told by the real estate agents to go and fight the appeal, and then that's what happens. After they build the home, they go to the appeals process and they fight the appeal and this is what I'm being told out in the street so I mean and that's the exact need for a countywide reassessment but but this is why you're saying it's unfair is because some people are doing an appeal and I'm saying that's creating it but do you, do you understand no, where I'm no. going with well, the appeals process it's a chicken or egg scenario people are appealing it because it's unfair it's 50 years it's a bad since, tax. We, since yeah. we re that's, that's my yeah, it's, it's a bad, bad tax yeah. because of so that because that's just one area that it's a bad tax law so, so I'm, I'm looking for assistance and, and trying to get that changed so tell so you that the getting to the fairness never coming through. getting to the fairness point you have situations where people are investing in their homes maybe they're not doing you know expansive you know revisions remodels they're not being reassessed that's the other issue that, I, that we did fix well, too so different neighborhoods may fluctuate in market value over time. Well, if their so square footage increases, they're being reassessed. If they exactly. But if they're, they're not, they're not then, not, then they're not being reassessed. So, so you have properties that are stuck back 50 years ago and then new builds that reflect present day. And so you're not getting that equity and fairness. And I know 
the Supreme Court has recognized and there's been a number of studies done where the length of time from your initial base year valuation for reassessment, the, the length of time between that and current year, the, the common level ratio only takes you so far and it's not going to make that wholly equ equitable at the end of the day. And I, so I think that's the point to make is that... I, I'm glad we're having this back and forth because you're, you brought up another point with the permits and, and she's correct. Um, what we also found going throughout the county is that the boroughs and the cities and municipalities aren't handing the permits into the county or not even getting permits. So um, that's another flaw, flawed part of this law because you have to get any new construction, you have to get per permits on your property and that should be coming into the county so that we can go out and do a reassessment on the property once that addition is put on, on the property. What we're finding is that we weren't even getting the permits. So what we did is, and Commissioner O'Malley and Commissioner Terriani uh, uh, helped me with this as well to make sure that these permits are being picked up by our community relations people and being brought into the assessor's office. And right now we had how many? Uh, 81? 189, I believe, yesterday. Since In addition to that, the Commonwealth, both in the House and the Senate, just introduced two measures. Uh, John Foley gave me these this morning mandating that every borough, municipality, and town in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania provide their building permits on a monthly basis to the county assessor's office. A lot of them are not complying. We're going out chasing them down. It, honestly, we've had a little bit of a problem getting some of the permits from the city of Scranton, too. Maybe you could run interference and help us there, too. That's a, that's areas where we can work together. I'm trying to find areas where we can work as a, you know, to help in in some way. And that's great to keep if you had a like for instance in Missouri County where they're at a hundred percent to keep it at a hundred percent moving forward that is great but we're already 50 years into this. Well we did have a, an increase in our millage and um, that came with the library tax and I think I, I spoke about that in the one meeting um, and the, the referendum question on the ballot and you'll, you'll get a chuckle out of this Wayne. Um, shall Lackawanna County library tax be reduced from 2.5 mills to 0 0.875 mills to reflect change in predetermined ratio from 35% to 100% of actual value and be correspondingly adjusted to any future change in assessment ratio. Sounds like a tax decrease, right? It's not. It's an increase because they went from 35% to 100% and that was back in 86 and that was countywide. Well, I think so, that's probably revenue neutral, I think. No, I, I looked at the, the numbers. I got all the numbers and I, I don't have them with me today, but I did look at the numbers. So everybody got an increase and, and that was back in 1986. So that's why they had us listed in the in the state as having a reassessment because we did change the, the percentage to 100%. Um, just so the city's aware of that. And, the law um, did dictate that. She's correct on what I she's saying when you change the ratio right. it was. Right, you have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, did that by ordinance yeah. so we are at 100% and, um, you know, we're doing everything we can to try and help in any way we can at the county level. And I just want to make sure that you and the public are aware of the fact that, you know, when you say things and, and, and you know, you look at us and t for answers, we are trying to work with you and do as much as we can to fix what's in our power to fix without a huge expenditure. We're not trying to, um, you know, run interference in any way, shape, or form. We're doing the, what we think and what we're asking you for a little time to see how these implementations help you. And if they do, I mean, we would just ask that, that we, rather than looking at lawsuits and no, all we, this. We, we certainly appreciate you having us here today. I mean, we got some good dialogue here. We heard from the gentleman from Wilkes Barre, which was beneficial to us. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll go back and reassess. And no, nobody's, I don't think any of us are accusing the county of not working with this. I've never had a problem working with the county if I call for something. We've got an excellent Mayor, you, Mayor, you sat right. with me and, and said to me, can we get extra people on land bank? What'd I do? Yeah, and, I'm, I'm, and I, so I, we weren't, I, I hope you didn't take it as that. We, I didn't come here to say that the county doesn't work with us. That, that was not my intention at all. I've never had a problem working with the county. But, you know, we're looking, in our opinion, was that reassessment was the way to go. So we got some more data now. But what we'd like to do, and, and, and I'm sure you'll accommodate this, we'd like to get some information on the reassessment, you know. So I would ask somebody to call over, so maybe to talk to you, Andy. Yeah, we, we yeah, right, we, right, and we can get whatever data we want. We'll, we'll hey, our doors are always open. They right, always yeah. have been. And, 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 and if, and if Listen, I don't know, first I didn't mean it to sound like you didn't cooperate. What is, did I did I give you that impression? No, I it's, hope it's, not. it's just that the threat no. of lawsuit is kind of, just, well, you know, that's a threat. Out of, and, and, I will yeah, so. and I will continue. I'm with Wayne in yeah. the uh, assessor's office, right. and 
group of people from the city, we gave them our disc, we yeah. gave them our data on our records. Yeah. Everything is open to the public. We're more than willing to help. Yeah, and we're that's we came to here to hope that we can work work, work we something will. out. You know, and, we, and, 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 and hopefully we will. But we, we, we were concerned with the threat of lawsuits because nobody likes to litigate. Well, I think you saw what I said in the paper that that's that's not. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. A, Thrilled about trying to we're sue glad, another government entity. Hear, I think, and, I, and I'll address that. That was my we're comment. Glad to hear that. You don't want to bring a lawsuit. Right. Usually, right. the paper doesn't quote me that great, but they they were they were, they were good <laughs> on that one for oh, me. Trust yeah. me, I know where you're coming from. <laughs> but I, that was my comment in the paper, so I just I just Jeez. want to address that. Which is what, and obviously, the attention to the right. meeting today. Well, obviously, I, I would okay. much rather us be able to work something out to yeah. have a reassessment. But if we get to a point where the majority of the commissioners' board says absolutely no way, we're not having a reassessment and the city believes it's the right thing to do, then at that point we'd have to look at other options. I would much rather us talk and try to work something out to achieve the end goal of tax fairness than sue. But if it came down to that, it's it's an option on the table for the city. That's that's well, one of the questions when the Times call I can't even remember who interviewed me yesterday. The Times interviews me so much, but uh, one of the questions they asked me yesterday was, "Do you think there would be more meetings?" I said, "I'm sure there's going to be more meetings." I never, I don't think anybody came here today thinking that we were going to solve this right here and now. So we have some dialogue. I hope we'll continue to have some dialogue, <coughs> and hopefully, hopefully we'll move forward and we'll get it, we'll get it straight out. That's fair for every, everybody concerned. Now, if you want, to you can have Evan contact us. Yeah. Anybody, I, I'm more than willing to set up a meeting for him with our financial people, our assessors, and share data and find out how we can be helpful to you. And, and, and that's great. That's all we're looking for. Is, you know, and, and we worked close with Dave Bolzani when he was there. Yeah, and, and, and again, I, I hope I didn't give you the impression that I came here to... to to no, you did not. Okay, yeah. No, I, I've, never had, it wasn't I, I've never comments, had a problem. So no, was, I, if I can just say two comments. Number one, I agree with the mayor totally that any time we've asked for assistance from the county, they've been great. Uh, from the tax abatement to the land bank to the information for uh, on the disk, always. Uh, but if I can ask, under what circumstances would the county commissioners agree to a reassessment? Are there any circumstances that you would agree to a reassessment? What's the question, Wayne? Under what circumstances would the commissioners agree to do a reassessment? What conditions, what circumstances? Is there an absolute assurance out there that our senior citizens aren't going to be run out of our houses? Well, because I'm not going to lie to you. You know what I mean? Listen, I stayed out of it. Jerry was for it. Commissioner was against it. Commissioner right. Cummings was against it. I said not one word, nothing. You could, you could watch every single tape of our meetings. I waited until the vote went through. And I never went out and said, <coughs> against four. And like the numbers, 26,572. The numbers, the city of Scranton was overwhelming the, the itself. 13,494. I'm not concerned no, about I'm just trying to throw it out. Yeah. It's, oh. not, it's not political. I'm, these people came on, they vote on behalf of their families. That's what I'm assuming. You know I mean, these are fiduciary responsibilities to someone. Listen to them. I mean, I, was, I wasn't faking a stand until I heard what their opinion was. We made sure, like I said, our education was right down the middle. And like Commissioner Cummings, Commissioner Notarian, we made sure it was right in the middle. Like, so we weren't like pushing for this to be one way or the other. Well, Commissioner, my, my opinion on the seniors, and I'm, we have the same concerns, is that most seniors live in modest homes and modest neighborhoods. So therefore, in my opinion, that'll probably put them in the bottom third of any reassessment, which would probably put them in a the safety net. Also, seniors generally are the ones that never file an appeal because they're intimidated by the process. So they've been paying the same assessment for years and years and years. And, and our <coughs> our uh, educational uh, video uh, was sure. fair. Thank you. There's no question about it. But it was very limited in the amount of very people limited. that get to see it. Okay. When companies come in, we've talked with companies. Tyler, who's one of the companies, there's only two companies in Pennsylvania that can do this. Okay. Other states have many companies that do it because they're forced to reassess on a regular basis. Many states are. Okay. Because there's no business in Pennsylvania. There's two. They say they spend so much more time and energy and effort and money to educate people prior to doing it than we did, which we had limited resources to do it. So it was fair. But it wasn't done how it would have been done if we, in fact, actually aired a reassessment company to come and do it. The data that John Foley has from when they started doing this originally, much of that is still available and much of that is still relevant. Is it not, John? 
Uh, you mean the Century 21? Yes. That are, yes. We have boxes on this, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So can we, I so got to answer, answer this really quick. Can this one, question? One second. Sure. Now, if whoever came in and did that reassessment, did that actual workshop video, yes. video would they be null and void to actually come in and do, be part of the RFP? So none of them were going to knock down the doors for that. For that. They were coming for that. They, were they would want the shot at actually coming to do the reassessment you itself. Know, explain, explain, John. Do it. So I, I just I, I thought yeah. he had a, I thought Councilman Evans had a good question. So we know going forward. He yeah. I, I mean, could you restate I your question, you. please? I can well, I, 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 I'll, I'll say right now. What's, what's the question? The question is, would we? Are would there any circumstances that the county can move forward with the reassessment? We can't really talk about anything other than our opinion. Uh, I'm assuming, correct? We can't. Right. Well. So my opinion. My opinion. Everybody knows where I stand on this, and that's because when I was running for office and before that, I watched multiple people lose their homes to property taxes. I mean, we have a lot of Scrantonians that moved to my town because <coughs> properties were lost to the tax sales. And as a matter of fact, I talked to numerous ones this past month when I was going door to door for our candidates that are running for petitions to fill them out. I'm with the public every quarter almost, and I go door to door and speak to people. And I know who's being affected by this. And I can tell you I sat with people in West Scranton as well who cried to me, please, do not do a reassessment. And I'm talking over on Orb Street. I can give you uh, privately the names of the people so that you can talk to them. They won't do repairs on their house. They're afraid that their assessment's gonna go up if they do. They have, I have, they have a widow over there who is, is so afraid, she's, she feels like she's stuck in her property. She can't sell her home. She can't pay the taxes she has now. She can't afford an increase. And she certainly didn't want any reassessment. I mean, one person is enough for me to vote no on reassessment. One. I can't, I can't watch another person lose their home. I just can't. Now, I'm sorry if that, and, and that's not a political statement. That, that is what I see and what I deal with in the public, and I'm sure you do as well. And I just cannot support a law that leaves even one person homeless. I can't. I just can't do it. Homes Personally. are sold every year by Lackawanna County under the current and system. And I don't agree so. with that either. You can ask the commissioners. I don't agree. I want the whole entire system changed. Can I hang on one minute? Commissioner, please, just one minute. Because he's directing this to me specifically. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah, I apologize. Um, I don't like the current system with judicial and tax sales. I would never implement that. That was a system that was implemented in 2009. Guess what? I am trying to get rid of that because that's a horrible thing to do to people in our county to kick them out of their properties over a tax. So trust me, Mr. Rogan, I am working on getting rid of that entire you make way that that goes. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean so to, I just want to make sure I trust but that. In order for us to help those same people, and I'm as concerned as you are, we have to drive our economic development. We've gotten, we were, it was supported by the Chamber of Commerce, by the Realtors Association, that this will in turn help us expand our tax base so we can lower people's taxes and stop taking money. Property We've been listening people. to those people for 50 years, and this is where we're at today. So and it's I'm not 50 sure years since we've been saying well, to me. No, no one's been listening. To okay, I think I think we I think we kind of got what we needed right. to get here today. Okay, um, yeah. for, you know, I can ask you. very simple. I, we just this is their first meeting. Yeah. I'd rather have some ongoing dialogue. That's my answer. You know, I mean, that's where I'm at. Okay. Um, I do fear for the seniors. I'm not. That's absolutely. And, 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 and I think we all do. Nobody, nobody wants anybody. Well, that's why. That's why I want to lose Pointed house. out to us what would happen to the average person in the city of Wilkesboro when their taxes were going up. We, we wanted to share that with you. Well, you said that was not utilized during the actual reassessment situation, but for Commissioner Terry, and he's right. The actual education was right in the middle of the middle of the road. If it was the way it would have been, if it was in reverse, it would have been showing how reassessment is going to absolutely, utterly help you. So that would have actually been something that would have been a whole different type of perspective. We tried to put it out there so it was exactly what it was, what reassessment I, I don't think anybody said it wasn't fair. I, I think the, the thing I'm not saying a lot of people didn't you understand it, a lot of people didn't it. get to see it. I think, I, think that's, that, I think that's what the, the argument on the other side is. Nobody, nobody's saying that you didn't, you didn't do a fair you know, uh, uh, presentation. I just think a lot, a lot of people didn't understand it and, and a lot of people didn't get to see it. I know, you know, 
we all stand at the polls, right? And and I have people go, oh, geez, I don't know what I'm going to do if I vote for this one, my taxes go up, right? So I don't think everybody grasps it as much as they should, and maybe we need to educate them again. You know, maybe maybe you need to put that presentation out there again. It couldn't hurt if if, if we do that. And then and then some people just. <coughs> Don't have any desire to even learn about it. You know, you can't you can't force somebody to learn. You know, uh, I had so. I had multiple meetings after that, and I had the whole entire auditorium in Carbondale. John, how many showed up? This then? means basically. Oh, I, sh I had another meeting. Yeah, and that's then. unfortunate. That's so important. so I, I don't know what to say to people who say to me that we didn't do enough because I went out even after that and did more meetings throughout the district, and they weren't well. There was ten people at one, five at another. So um, if they really were concerned about reassessment, they should have shown up. I mean, the videos are still on our website for each meeting that we have. People can go there today. Maybe They're when still you there. guys have your meeting at council, you can make that announcement that if somebody would like to view reassessment, it's on the county's website and they can take a look at There's it. There's multiple and videos on it, yeah. Before, before I don't we believe they're, they're that so one aware of the reassessment. I think that people know what's going on with reassessment and they complain about it all the time to me. So I think they understand it. And I think that just because an opinion differs doesn't mean that they don't understand what it actually means. One of the strong reasons everybody's saying we should do a reassessment is going to help business and industry. It's going to bring more people to Lockwood County. It's going to help us. Lausanne County did a comprehensive reassessment. Our economy is just as strong as Luzerne County's. Our businesses are just as good. There's as many businesses moving into Lackawanna County as there is moving into Luzerne County. Look at the numbers and defy that. Show me who's moving into Luzerne County that's not moving into Lackawanna County. We went down and we met with their developers. They're willing to come up here and work in Lackawanna County. Every day of the week, our economic development offices out there were working with the chamber they work to bring the people here. into the city and bring people into the county. We're not getting tremendous complaints from people when we bring businesses and industries here to look at they're not saying I don't want to look at you because you didn't do a reassessment never I'm not saying that. that it's not going to help I'm not saying that at all I've been in this business all my life I understand that side of the issue but I, I don't believe that we're being hurt economically because we didn't do a reassessment when you compare us to Luzerne County who's our, our neighbor to the south that has 350,000 people and our economy is doing just as well as theirs if not better in many instances Okay. So I think Evan will, Evan thank, will contact thank you. you. And thank you for coming in. Whatever we get, we will share with council. Right. You know the information. And may our doors are open for whatever yeah, information. And, and again, I, 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 not, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but uh, look, yeah. our, we never intended to say the county wasn't cooperative. Then no, no, nobody yeah. here, I don't think, meant, meant that. So, all right. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank you having us. Thank you. Thank you.